no need to fade. So yeah, the last the last thing on funding. Um, you know, my personal opinion is I don't think the arts should be funded. I think, you know, if you want to be a musician, if you want to be an artist, go and do it, do it yourself. That's that's the starting point. But I think if you really believe in your music, if you believe in your art, in your writing, anything like that, then you've got to do it for the right reasons. You've got to do it because you want you want to get something out of your system or whatever. And I just think People are going to do it because they love it and they want to do it. They're not going to do it because of money. So I don't think funding the arts in that way is an effective uh, means to help people. However, I do understand that some art, some music, some ideas, some projects do need financial support. Um, and, for example, somebody might already be a musician or might already be a music promoter and they want to take a bigger risk, organise a bigger event... Um, organise a tour, take their band to Europe, um, try something they never tried before, and they need the experience, but there's money up front involved, you know, a band might need to record a record, and they can find half the money themselves, but they can't find the rest of it. Or, you know, a band, numbers of bands I take to Europe, you know, they know they're going to earn four or five hundred euros a show in Europe, but somebody's got to pay for the van hire, somebody's got to buy the ferry tickets, somebody's got to book the hotels or sort out accommodation before the band even leave the country. And some bands, you know, they have to buy their records off the record label um, so that they've got something to sell on the tour, they've got to manufacture T-shirts to sell on the tour. So somebody's going to come up with a lump sum of money before the tour even begins. And, you know, most of these bands are going to do the tour anyway. They'll borrow the money off mates or they'll get a bank loan or stick it on their credit card. And they're going to go and do it because they believe in what they're doing. And whether there's government funding or, or regional subsidy for what they do, it's not going to stop them or encourage them to do what they do. They're going to do it anyway. So I think in cases like that, if 10% of the costs or 20% of the costs or 30% of the costs could be met by some form of funding, that's just going to make those, that's just going to reduce the costs for those artists and it's going to make their life easier. But it's also going to stop people who may have, a, may have a job, you know, working for a creative company. And they think, oh yeah, there's this funding available. I could start a band and I could go to Europe because there's funding available to take my band to Europe. And, you know, in the case of a funded project where it's 100% funding or 50% funding, I think that, that causes all sorts of problems. Because what it does is the people who are struggling in the marketplace you know, fighting to, to do what they're doing with their music, um, suddenly find themselves surrounded by all these other competitors who might have had funding or support to start a brand new project that's then competing with them for, for limited resources. So my, my view on funding is it should never be more than 10 or 20% of the total cost of doing a project. Ideally, government funding or regional funding, you know, shouldn't be used at all. But in the case of these bigger projects where you know, somebody wants 50% of the funding or maybe even 100% to do the funding. Um, a lot of the people that are getting the funding are, you know, what I would regard as approved suppliers. You know, they've, they've engaged the local council or the local regional development fund and they've had a small pot of funding for something before. So they go back and they put in an application for a bigger pot of money. And because they're a known entity, they've already had the money and they've spent it. You know, they might get another chunk of money. And then over a period of time, you know, the local council or the regional development agency or the, the arts funding organisation think, well, we've got to give out this money and we can't risk giving it to people we don't know. So we're going to give it to the people we know and the people who've had money before. And then what started off as an honest application for funding to do a project with good in incentives or, or you know, a, a clear purpose, it suddenly reaches the point of saying, well, 
I'm an approved supplier and I've had loads of money off these people before. There's, you know, 50 or 100 grand for this project. You know, if I sit down and write this business plan, they're going to give me the money because I'm an approved supplier and I can write business plans and, well, I'll invent some project to spend the money. And again, it, it goes from investing the money in creatives who are struggling to actually just giving the money to people who are just going to spend it within a time frame on a specific project purely to ensure that the money is spent. And there's no, you know, in my view, there's no emphasis on investing the money to generate a sustainable project that will then help others. It's all about spending the money here and now. And I can think of numerous projects in Birmingham that have started, they've run for a period of time, a year, two years, three years, they've spent all the money, and then they've stopped. But nothing has continued. There's been no sustainability. And, you know, just off the top of my head, you know, there's projects like birminghammusic.com, Creative Insight, uh, Creative Launchpad. Um, you know, there's a whole list of projects that have started and stopped in Birmingham. But for me, I can't really see how those projects have really helped. Um, you know, I've, I run Iron Man Records. It's a, a local record label. I've lost count the number of times I've tried to get help and support for the record label. And the first thing people say to me is like, oh, have you got a business plan? And I go, well, yeah, it's this four-page document and I've got a rough idea of what it's going to cost me to run this project. And they go, oh, you need a consultant. And then before I know it, I've got some person who's supposedly a business consultant helping me put together a project. And all they do is they just rewrite what I've already done and, you know, make a more detailed financial forecast, you know, that... Basically, I'm going to do exactly what I said before, but in more detail. And then it turns out they get paid to help me. And they get paid to write the business plan. And they get paid to help me with all this other stuff. And then, you know, I put the business plan in. And then it's like, oh, sorry, you know, your business plan is not good enough. And then if you look at it, where is this money to help the creative industries? It's helping consultants to talk to me about stuff I already know or develop stuff that I've already written. Um... And, you know, some of the bigger projects that I've been involved with, you know, one of which has something like, you know, 300, 315,000 pounds to spend over three, three years. And 45% of that budget didn't go on struggling musicians. It went on wages, you know, sick pay, annual leave, um, office space, you know, rent for office space, electricity, computers, desks and all the rest of it. And really, in my view, there was no need for an office. There's no need for all of that, you know. I, I admit that staff have to be paid to do a job. But again, you know, did it really need to be 45%? Maybe it could have been 20%, could have been spent on costs. And again, you know, the project was all about spend, so it's like, well, you know, you've got £2,000, you need to deliver a seminar by month three. And it's just like, well... Why don't we take the £2,000 and distribute it amongst, you know, 500 struggling musicians or 100 struggling musicians and help them on their way? But instead you end up going, well, you know, we'll get four speakers and we'll pay them 500 quid each and then we'll hire a room for 250 quid and we'll, you know, get catering for 250 quid. And the people who benefit from the funding are the catering company, the room hire people and the speakers who come in who are already earning a living from what they do. But the struggling musicians come and sit for free in the audience and listen to what's being said to them and yes yeah, some of them benefit from it of course they do but again I wonder whether it'd be better just to say well instead of coming to hear the talk why don't you just come and have an envelope with some money in it and you know that brings me to my idea about a thousand envelopes that you know in many ways rather than having you know 350,000 pounds or whatever to spend on a, on a huge project for three years supposedly to engage local musicians you know, I had this mad idea that what I'd like is a thousand envelopes and then the money in cash and then just divide the money up between the thousand envelopes. Maybe have some envelopes with, you know, 20 quid in it, some envelopes with 20 grand, some envelopes with five grand or, you know, a few envelopes with 50 quid or whatever. Divide it all up and invite people to apply to the project and then, you know, maybe have a certain period of time where people can apply for the project. Their names go in, a, in the hat and then the first thousand names that come out of the hat are given an envelope and the envelope comes with an agreement and the agreement says we're going to give you whatever is in this envelope and in 12 months time you're going to come back and you're going to say how much money was in the envelope 
and what you've done with it. And if we feel that what you've done with that money is worthwhile and we can see the clear benefit that that, has, that money's had for the art or the project that you're involved with, you don't need to give it back. But if we feel that money has not been well spent or has not benefited you or what you've tried to do, then you have to give the money back. And I think if suddenly people were given money, you know, somebody might end up with an envelope with 20 grand in it, they might go, I don't think I can spend 20 grand effectively. And they might give it back because they might not feel confident they can spend the 20 grand. Whereas someone else might get the 20 grand and go, brilliant, I can, I can record a great album, I can do a video, I can book a tour. And I've got the belief that in a year's time, I'm going to come back and say, this is what I've done with 20 grand. And you're not going to take it back off me because I can demonstrate clearly what I've done with the money. And I think that would be a much more effective way to put the money into the local creative community than what's currently happening, where people are given the money, they run a project, it's a success or a failure, it's good or bad, it contributes to the community, it doesn't contribute to the community, it builds sustainability, it has no sustainability, and then at the end of the project, you know, the money is spent, evaluation is written, the folder is closed, and then, you know, time moves on and the next project starts, and I, and I just don't, I don't feel that's the way to do it. So anyway, that's my stupid opinion for what it's worth and uh, hopefully things will change for the better um, but I think you know the government cuts and the re reduction in funding in the West Midlands has been the best thing that's ever happened because suddenly you know people have got to start spending their own money they've got to take their own risks they've got to do it themselves they've got to do it properly and if and if and if they're not successful and they're faced with total failure then they're gonna have to deal with that they can't just spend someone else's money to solve the problem. So I think now that the, the government funding for the region has been reduced or, or cut to a, a, a far reduced level, I think over the next couple of years we're going to see some really interesting things in Birmingham. And I, for one, despite the horror that's gone on with the government cuts, um, I think it's going to do the creative community the world of good, and I look forward to seeing the fruits of what happens.